Hey, this is Chris Franco, and you are listening to Compound Money Quietly, the CMQ Investing Podcast. CMQ investors, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. In this episode of Compound Money Quietly, we are going to answer once and for all the argument of whether dollar cost averaging or lump sum investing makes the most sense. What I've discovered, and again, I'm only doing this because I want to get results, not because I'm trying to make some academic point or prove anyone wrong. I'm trying to figure out what would be the most sensible, most rational, most likely to succeed approach to invest any sum of money that I don't plan on touching for, let's say, the next 30 years. And assuming that I'm putting that into something very sensible, like a low cost index fund. So what I've done here is I've gone through and I've found academic studies. I found the lessons of legendary investors. I found you know examples from uh, studies that aren't from academia, but actually from some of these major financial institutions. Um, and I've put together basically a cohesive argument that makes the case that dollar cost averaging in general is not the most rational way to invest a lump sum of money. Now, before we go any further, I know someone out there who's listening is going to say, hey, uh, well, no, but I'm putting a set percentage of my paycheck in every single month, so therefore you're wrong. And I, I already saw that in my DMs. Let me be clear. If you set aside X percentage of your paycheck every month and you do that and you do that every month, there's nothing wrong with that. That is not saying that for some reason, you know, that's bad because you're we're not talking about the same things. I could even, if I was being a jerk, I could make the case that you're in fact lump sum investing because you're investing every bit of amount of money that you have set aside to invest at that given time. What we are talking about here though, is if let's say you have $1,000, let's say you have, we'll say $1,200, $12,000, uh, $120,000, or $1.2 million that you need to do something with. Should you wait for the market to correct? Do you think the market, if you think it's gonna crash, do you wait, for the, do you wait to buy the dip? Or do you put it all to work at once? The answer, and I'll explain why, but the answer, if you are a long-term investor, is to put it in, to whatever you're gonna put it into, long-term in one lump sum. Let's get to it. Starting off here, dun dun dun. Right off the bat, the reason I wanted to make this episode is really was partly because of Charlie Munger. I've always been like this, but Charlie Munger has encouraged me to go this way even more, and that is to challenge the conventional wisdom of the day. Uh, to find the, uh, how does he say, the asininity and any sort of conventional wisdom, to strip it out of the conventional wisdom and find the unconventional wisdom. The conventional wisdom, and many experts are saying this, is that dollar cost averaging is a smart way to invest your money, that if you have a lump sum, you should spread it out over set periods of time. Well, despite what those experts say, what we found here is that it's actually an irrational way to invest your money if you're a long-term investor. So right off the bat, let's make a random scenario, a made-up scenario. You have... $1,200, let's say $12,000, it doesn't matter the amount. Now someone's gonna say, well, how did I get that money in the first place? Maybe you made a bunch of money in crypto, you sold, you wanna do something sensible with it. Maybe you had some savings that are building up and you realize, hey, I've got my emergency savings covered, I should do something productive with this money so it doesn't get eroded by inflation. Maybe, you know, grandma sent you a check, I don't know, whatever the case may be, you have this amount of money, whether how big or small it is, should you spread it out over a 12 month period, or should you put it to work all at once? Now, the proponents of dollar cost averaging would say, dollar cost averaging would help you avoid making this mistake of poorly timing the market. So here's what I mean. Let's say I wanna buy the VU. If I buy the VU right today, and I, buy all, I put all my money into that right now, and then in two months, the market corrects 25%. I might say, oh, I could have bought, I could have gotten a better, you know, average price if I just, you know, waited because I could have bought a lot more after the market corrected. While that is true, it ignores a fundamental first principle, that first principle being you cannot time the market. Now, there are plenty of stories, sob stories, sad stories, depressing stories of very smart investors thinking they can time the market and in doing so, uh, actually delaying putting their money to work, waiting for the perfect time, waiting for the correction. And what ends up happening is, they miss the bull run. They never get back in. Um, I don't need to go cite all the reasons because I want to keep this moving, but that can happen. Um, so anyway, the arguments in favor of dollar cost averaging are based on this false premise that you can time the market. Now, time in the market, one of my first principles here, time in the market always beats timing the market. That was one of the 
I'd say one of the most profound insights that I ever had as an individual investor. When I figured that out, not just because someone told me, but when I figured it out and actually understood it, it was like a light bulb went off. Like, okay, now that's one thing I don't have to think about now. And that's helpful. I was saying earlier uh, to some of our other CMQ investors on an Instagram Live, you know, there are certain things that when you understand them, not just like I said because someone said them, but because you actually understand it, um, it helps you know what to avoid and not to think about. And then you can think about what actually counts. And that is one of the best advantages or greatest advantages you can give yourself as an investor. Because look, this is a thinking game. And so if you're thinking about things that don't matter, you're not thinking about the things that do matter. And the person that is thinking about the things that matter is most likely going to do better than you and be less stressed. Um, so let me give you a quick quote, though, about timing the market. This is probably my favorite one. It's from the late, great Sir John Templeton. John Templeton said, history shows that time, not timing, is the key to investment success. Therefore, the best time to buy stocks is when you have money. Now, a couple other quotes here, just to you know, sprinkle it on top. Warren Buffett said that he can't time stocks and he doesn't know anyone else who can either. Jack Bogle, someone who's been recently a, a focal point of a couple of recent episodes, Bogle said, after nearly 50 years in this business, I do not know of anybody who has timed the market successfully. I don't even know of anybody who knows anybody who has done it. And finally, and I mentioned this earlier, but Peter Lynch, another legendary investor, uh, great author, someone I've learned a lot from. Peter Lynch said, and I quote, far more money has been lost by investors preparing for corrections or trying to anticipate corrections than has been lost in corrections themselves. Okay, so we can't time the market, let's not try to do it. But let's just say, you know, we don't believe that. You say, hey, those guys don't know what they're talking about. Well, what do our friends, what do our, our uh, what do the, mega nerds in academia say, well, according to three different academic studies that I will cite here, the first coming from 1979, and it's called A Note on the Suboptimality of Dollar Cost Averaging. This uh, study shows that arguments in favor of dollar cost averaging are irrational. Skipping forward to 1994, which was the first year that the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meetings, shareholder meeting was recorded, uh, it was titled Lump Sum Investing versus Dollar Cost Averaging. That study showed that lump sum investing is superior to dollar cost averaging. Fast forward again to 2006, which was, I believe, the year I graduated from high school, uh, a study called Mathematical Illusion, Why Dollar Cost Averaging Does Not Work, also concluded the same thing. Now, let's say you don't believe academia. You say, you know what, uh, you know, these damn liberal institutions, you know, you don't believe it, that's fine. Well, what do the major financial institutions find from their studies? Vanguard, a company that I am a big fan of and I guess a, a client of, Vanguard had a study on this very topic and they found that dollar cost averaging is suboptimal relative to lump sum investing. Um, and I'll share some of the actual findings here um, without boring you with the entire study. They found that uh, not only did they mention, by the way, that finance theory and historical evidence suggests that the best way to invest a sum of money is all at once. They acknowledge that. But here's what they found from their study. Here's what they did anyway. They compared the historical performance of immediate and systematic investing across three different markets, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia. And for a, the systematic plan, they invested cash in a balanced 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio in 12 equal monthly installments, very similar to what I described at the start of the episode. Uh, when they evaluated the returns of both the immediate and systematic investing approaches, across a rolling 12-month historical period. Uh, they found that the immediate investment approach led to greater portfolio values approximately two-thirds of the time. Now remember, this is just looking at a rolling 12-month period. When they looked at the same, the same allocation here and the same, um, to try to find the same basically like findings over a longer period of time, it was even more in favor of this immediate or lump sum approach. As they said here, and I quote, as the interval increased, immediate investment outperformed more frequently. In the United States, for example, immediate investment of a lump sum outperformed a six-month series of investments in approximately 64% of the historical periods. Now, get ready for this. Over a 36-month interval, immediate investment outperformed approximately 92% of the time. I don't remember exactly what year that Vanguard study was from, but if you're looking for it, you say, hey, well, show me a more recent one. Well, Morgan Stanley Wealth Management had a study that they published on October 13th, October 13th, that is, 
2020, so nearly exactly a year ago. Here's what they found. Quote, as this historical analysis illustrates, investor portfolios may outperform over a seven-year horizon with lump sum investing. That is, in the event an investor must deploy their capital, lump sum investing is more likely to produce favorable returns versus waiting to deploy such capital in increments as with dollar cost averaging. If you're looking for this study, by the way, it's titled Morgan Stanley Wealth Management Market Research and Strategy, colon, dollar cost averaging versus lump sum investing, behavioral considerations and potential outcomes. I will link all of this um, in a newsletter post that we make about this episode. If you're not familiar or not signed up for our newsletter, just go to cmqinvesting.substack.com. Um, okay, so those are basically three different buckets of evidence. We have legendary investors, we have academic research, and we have research from major financial institutions that all reach the same conclusion. Then I think what I always recommend doing is compare it to your own experiences, compare to what makes sense to you. For me, what helps is, is going again off first principles. We cannot time the market. Attempting to time the market is a loser's game. We are not, if anyone can time the market correctly and do it five times in a row, please bring them my way because I will, I, I will give them the podcast, okay? I will, uh, I will give whatever is in my Vanguard account, they can have it and just so I can be their friend and learn from them because I'm pretty sure their friendship would allow me to make that money back you know, 10 times. Um, again, my thing here is this, it's not to prove anyone wrong or to say that, you know, if you think dollar cost averaging is smart, you're stupid or anything like that, that's never what the point is. The point in what we're trying to do here with CMQ investing, figure out what works, figure out what doesn't work and why. And then once we figure out what works, we wanna see if we can make it work for us. Our goal as long-term investors is to create a compounding machine to build wealth long-term, that's how you do it. And it depends on how much we invest, the amount of time that money is put to work and the average rate of return that we achieve over the course of our investing lifetime. If there's any lesson here to take away, it's that if you have a sum of money that you do not need for 30 years, you are making, uh, you are likely making a mistake by holding it on the sidelines. Nothing in investing is 100%. There's nothing certain. As investors, we are dealing with an uncertain future. But what has the best or the highest probability of working and working in the way that you need it to? Lump sum investing does. Just to reiterate one more point here for everyone who's saying, not everyone, but I've had some feedback saying, well, you know, I invest a set percentage of my paycheck every month and that's dollar cost averaging. Yes, technically that is true, but there's nothing about that. That is the amount of money you have to invest. You're not trying to time the market. The point is, is if you're holding on savings, if you have, you know, you recently sold an individual stock, or maybe, like I said, you made some crypto gains and you need to do something with it, you don't need that money, trying to systematically space it out over time in order to, you know, get a better, um, you know, a better overall price, you're making a mistake if you're a long-term investor, according to the evidence that we outlined here. So appreciate you listening to this. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. Charlie Munger says that the best thing a human being can do is help another human being know more. If you learned something from this episode, it'd be great if you could share it with a friend, post about it on social media, leave a written review, give us a five-star rating. It goes a long way. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you follow the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That way you'll get these episodes as soon as they come out. We have a YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash cmqinvesting. But with all that said, my name is Chris Franco. This has been Compound Money Quietly, the CMQ Investing Podcast. Thank you for listening. We'll talk soon.